And then what I want to do is just quickly bring in uh, an article here that is on a website that I probably can't mention because of just how sensitive um, the West is. Oh, you can probably see the name there. <laughs> anyway, before I bring the guest in, I'm going to ring a, read a bit about this. Um, Beijing banning Micron means China has mastered chip making. Now, this is quite a hot take uh, from uh, a friend of the show. You've, you haven't met him on the show before, but he's definitely a friend of the show. It says, uh, the article's not by him, but the take is uh, from him. China has slapped a ban on US chip maker Micron, prohibiting it from selling to Chinese companies involved in key infrastructure projects. Beijing has mirrored Washington sanctions on the People's Republic high-tech technology, Asia-Pacific consultant Thomas W. Polkin told Sputnik, adding that there's more to the development that meets the eye. And that is uh, our guest, uh, our guest of honor for this evening. Uh, Tom, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Tom, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in person. Well, on camera is kind of the same. Since I first caught COVID about six months ago when you came to Shanghai. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. But uh, you had some great stories. So you, it was good to meet you. Fun times, fun times. Now, what I want to get you to do, because I don't really understand the whole chip making uh, sure. <sighs> thing very well. So I hope you can help us explain. And you've also recently um, been to Taiwan. So can you fill us in what is happening? Well, uh, think about it this way, because I also read a book called uh, Chip War. And um, hmm. the Chip War is um, a book uh, that the book is basically about how chips are and about Amer the global dominance of chips in all technologies. So think mm. of a chip sort of like as the brain of an economic device. So when you're using your cell phone, your smartphone, or base, or your computer, there are chips attached to it. These chips mm. are very important because when you work on the chips, uh, these, the chips are absolutely necessary for a very good reason. Mm. That what goes on is that it controls how the uh, your electronic devices function. So without the chips you basically have a no electronics whatsoever. You need uh, the chips, and what is next to the chips is what's known as semiconductors. They're hmm. sort of like the, the, frame, the framework of the chips as well as the framework of the uh, uh, devices. So all chips are absolutely necessary for all electronic devices that you have access to. If you don't have chips, you don't have a functioning electronic devices. Micron is a major player in the chips industry, and hmm. they had sold many chips into China as well as to all over the world. So it is a big deal that when they don't have the ability to sell their chips to China, this is going to be very destructive to, for, for them and their business prospects for this year and for the year ahead. Uh, obviously, maybe China will change its mind later. But that would depend on whether or not Washington becomes, starts changing their mind on how they deal with the, the chips that come from China. So in other words, this is a situation where if Washington sort of uh, compromises, then China begins to compromise. This is just simple, basic uh, negotiations. Uh, Washington has been in total control of this economic decoupling. They've mm. tried to control the narrative. So when China announces that, well, we're going to start with Micron and we're not going to buy up their chips for our major infrastructure projects, that basically is a statement to Washington to say, either soften your tone or we'll start hitting back. Yeah, so it was interesting that America seemed to kick up such a stink about uh, China's move. And yeah. you said that, you know, that shouldn't have been a surprise at all. So why is it that the U.S. still gets so caught up um, when they, you know, get a taste of their own medicine and get well, yeah, basically... Well, I mean, that was, it was humorous back. because when I was talking to the Sputnik News reporter, she, mm. was at, she quoted directly from the government statement. I, I mm. actually started laughing. I was like, <laughs> are, are they even aware that, that this is exactly what they've been doing to China. I mean, this is hypocrisy at its finest. It is absolutely absurd that they could make this kind of statement knowing full well that this is exactly what they've done to China. It doesn't make sense. Another issue that people need to address, and I, and I wasn't able to address it in this article, but I want to emphasize is, why does Micron need the U.S. government to defend them? Mm. They're a private company. Don't you think that they would issue the statement, oh, we don't like what China did to us, 
oh, we're trying to do business in China and we're being unfairly attacked. Instead of them saying it, they go to Washington to tell them. That, that's <laughs> cowardly. I mean, if I was in PR, I would say, look, own up to it. Say, look, we have a problem. We want to do business in China and they're not letting us. We don't like it. Instead, they have Washington make that statement for them. It's quite, it's quite hilarious and, and childish at times. Now, I want to show you another something that's very, very... It made me laugh. This guy, I don't know if you are familiar with this guy, Tom, but he looks like a total idiot and it looks like he can't handle the media. But uh, a US reporter gave this guy um, a bit of oh, something yeah. he wasn't expecting. Yeah, you yeah, probably know what I'm talking about. I want to see that again. It was hilarious. Yeah, let's have a look and we'll have a laugh. We have very serious concerns uh, that with the reports that the PRC has restricted the sale of Micron chips to certain domestic in industries. And broadly, this action appears inconsistent with the PRC's assertions that it is open for business and committed to a transparent regulatory framework. If no. you guys ban or seek to ban a Chinese company from doing, you know, from conducting business uh, here or overseas, why shouldn't they be allowed to do the same thing? Uh, I will say that we have made clear that there are concerns that we have with Huawei and the use of Huawei techno technology. That's a national yeah. security well, concern. Uh, uh, yeah, well, but, uh, the, but okay, but, but China is allowed to have national security concerns too. They aren't are, they? but as I said, they have, yeah, made, clear, so they have made clear that they're open for business and said there would be a transparent. Well, you made hold clear on, that you're open they, for business they too. They have said they would <laughs> had a transparent regulatory framework, something I think we have here that does not exist in China. Uh, well, you know, part of the problem is, and I've seen it too often in recent years with the Biden administration, is mm. you have incompetence. Yeah. You have an incompetent government in action in the U.S., and it is shocking to see it. You would have thought, first of all, why should the government get involved in a private government's, uh, uh, private company's affairs? Mm. Okay? I mean, sure, it is a politically tinged issue, but this is more of a concern for Micron than it should be for the U.S. government. Mm. By the fact that the U.S. government is raising a defense, is showing that Micron apparently has great influence in Washington. Apparently, their lobbyists are very good at what they do. To me, Spending that's, money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, there was a time when the Democrat Party used to be the anti-business party. They mm. used to be the anti-big business. There actually was a time I even was a, a Democrat, okay? I was like a Kennedy-style Democrat, press. <laughs> okay? But, but they, that was when they were pro-peace. That was when they were anti-big business. That was actually when they supported uh, labor, and they believe in fairness. Today's Democrat Party is nothing more than neoconservative foreign policy and big business U U.S. Chamber of Commerce mentality. I've mm. even had Democrats communicate with me and openly admit that they are closely connected to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. This is mm. not the Democrat Party of old. This is a Democrat Party that basically is Republican if you ignore the social issues. Yeah, I guess it all in the U.S. it all comes down to money. So, and this yeah. is one of the things that people are so uncomfortable about with China is that money or billionaires and, and lobbyists don't seem to hold the same amount of sway. Well, not they don't seem to; they just don't hold the same amount right. of sway that, that they do. They're used to having in uh, in the West, well, in the U.S. Anyway, we did have a quick comment here from Hong Luang who said, "U.S. Let's ban Huawei. Let's hold Huawei CFO hostage. Let's ban TikTok." China, you must buy chips from American companies, even when we want when we won't let them sell chips to you. That that's the ironic thing because the U.S. is yeah, trying exactly. to stop the I'm, sale of know, some it's chips. Funny how these these wonderful uh, critics you have, the your fan club. I I, <laughs> I I have sometimes I have a nice fan club too, but the thing <laughs> is, is they are being very illogical. They're saying, yeah, it's, "Oh, we have the right to hit China hard, but if they hit back, oh, that's not fair." Exactly. It is what it's, it is. Okay, if you're, it's I have a golden rule, and when I deal with people and I deal with politics, if I'm going to hit somebody, I'm not going to complain if they hit back. Okay, so the, the simple case is when you take when you throw a punch and you can't take a punch in the back, then you're nobody. You're you're a total loser. Okay, you. This is the problem that the U.S. is having right now. They have turned in to wimps. They like to throw punches. 
but they don't like to take the hits. The fact of the matter is, in the real world, everyone has to take hits. It's just a part of life, and it's the way the world is. But the U.S. just thinks that they are a wonderful country, everybody loves them, and so if they do sanctions on another country, everyone's going to follow because they have these spectacular, wonderful one, a country, and when it's not that simple. In the real world, people actually care about their business, and if mm. they get impacted, perhaps they hit back. And China has been very hit very hard over the CHIPS Act. I'm actually surprised they took so long before they did any, any response. Maybe they thought perhaps Washington would soften their tone or lighten up. They didn't. So this is what has become the inevitable. Micron is going to be in a lot of trouble in China. Mm, interesting. Hey, uh, someone just filled in the word I was looking for before. Tian Tan said multipolar world was what you were wanting to refer to. That is exactly it. Um, we are heading very fast uh, towards a, a new multipolar world order, which I think is pretty awesome. Tom, uh, just before I let you go, one more question, because in your piece here uh, with Sputnik, you talked about um, the idea that this was probably not something that came out of left field, this oh, yeah. um, ban. So can you talk a bit about that? Well, first of all, I, I also, it first came to my attention when I was, uh, closely monitoring Twitter yesterday. Mm. And apparently somebody put up a tweet saying that they had launched an investigation a few months ago. If mm. you launch an investigation and it's an official investigation, you're going to send a letter to Micron to, to ask them to explain why that they should have, how are they going to address the national security concerns that the Chinese government has. Mm. You can't tell me that Microsoft Micron was totally unaware of this. I'm pretty sure the Chinese government in that particular agency, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name right now, but there was a specific agency that launched a review, and I'm pretty sure they probably sent a letter to Micron to at least give them the chance to provide an explanation. Mm. This was about a month or two ago. This was not an investigation that was recent. This is what the person on Twitter was saying. So then I, I start reflecting on this, and then I happen to remember, oh, I was in Taiwan. I was mm. set to meet a senior executive at Micron, and I was told this guy was like one of the top officials there in Taiwan, and he was excited to meet, and we were going to have a great meeting in Kaohsiung, and then suddenly I get a cancellation. I'm like, well, what's uh. going on? What, what's the Oh, there's a lot of layoffs. He's a little bit depressed. Well, obviously, mm. if there's a lot of layoffs, <laughs> they didn't tell me what was the reason for the layoffs, but apparently I think I know. I'm just doing speculation. I'm not saying that this is what what really happened, but I'm just sort of connecting the dots. That's part of mm. what my job is as a geopolitical analysis. I'm supposed mm. to connect the dots because a lot of times people have misunderstandings because they don't connect the dots. And I just see that there was a pattern. How will China do its review unless it contacted Micron to ask them and to explain their concerns. So what likely happened is they went off to Washington and said, oh, can you protect us? Oh, can you stop China from doing this investigation? Oh, whatever. I, I don't know. I'm just speculating, okay? Mm. But it's obvious that Micron was aware of it. They started doing major layoffs in April, and it was in their Kaohsiung office. And then the, the Sputnik, when I told them the story, they had to double check. They said, we want to make sure... This, we want to confirm this. So they said, can you just spell the name of Kaohsiung? We don't even know the name of the city. I said, <laughs> Kaohsiung is the second largest city in Taiwan. It's a port city. And I gave them the spelling. And they were able to find a link of the Micron office in, in Kaohsiung. Wow. So it is really about putting to, connecting the dots, and I know you are really good at that. And Tom, I want to say thank you so much for coming on and chatting about this chip matter because I really don't understand it a lot. So I was hoping well, I maybe in the future I can get you now. back. Yeah, yeah, I should get you back because I had a few comments while you were talking um, from followers saying, Andy, you're finally talking about the chips. Now, the fact of the matter is I just don't really understand it. So well, it was you know, really good. funny, and I'm sorry hmm. to interrupt you. Uh, a lot of times I, I deal with a lot of complex issues. Yeah. And I'm not a tech expert like 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 you or anybody else. But what I've discovered is I just have an ability to just do my research and my reading. And a lot of times what I've discovered, even on high-tech issues, is there is an actual philosophical 
background to it. Mm. It's more than just chips. When you understand that technology is something that can be, like, for example, the brain, then how do you build this technology? How does it get built? A lot of people just think that the chips just show up. You go buy it. You go buy a phone, and it has all the parts, and oh, wonderful. They don't think about <laughs> how every phone to make, even though Apple can make it in, like, two hours, you still mm. need to get all the parts together. You need to create the software and the hardware. So part of what my job is is to understand these complex issues and to break it down into as simple as possible so that when I talk to people or clients or the public, I can explain to them in a simple way so that then they can improve their ability to deal with the decision-making on those particular issues. Awesome. Well, I'm really glad to hear it, and, I, and I'm hoping to get some more insights from you in the future. So, Tom, thank you so, so much. I will talk to you again um, a bit later on. Okay.